June. It's like Christmas morning. It's still dark outside. It's not too early. You don't think anybody will be upset that we're awake already? We're just really excited because today is moving day. Finally, two years we've been waiting. Ah, oh, we get to move in today. <laughs> What's it gonna be like to wake up in our own house? A house, not an RV, not a motel room. It's gonna be stupendous. I can't wait. You don't have to wait anymore. We just have to get re get up and get ready and <laughs> put our stuff in the car and go. <laughs> Yay. Hi, I'm Rinda. I'm Jim. And we're Hardiness Approach. You might recognize where we're sitting. We used to sit here and talk to you all the time. And we're so happy to be sitting here again. Yes. <laughs> and this feels warm. This is, this is a... Freeze gonna happen tonight, so we've started. It was chilly today, cool wind, so we started running this to keep the house a little warmer tonight. We haven't needed it since we moved in, but today was a day. It's chilly in here without some help. We're excited that so many people have come back to watch us. We hope that that happens. We hope that we make um, our journey interesting for you. We've always been built around four things. Um, Food, eating good food. Exercising. Uh, being emotionally well. And doing it all in the setting of? A homestead. So here we are, doing it again. <laughs> On our homestead. It, we've had a lot of great experiences getting back here, uh, walking the land, doing what needs done, and making some plans and attempting to make those plans in a way that we don't overdo, which is a real temptation for us, but you can only do so much at once. We Especially when we're in finals week and both of us are up to here with school, besides all of this. <laughs> but <laughs> we're surviving. We are. He'll be done in one week. Yeah. I'll get this paper out, I promise. Maybe I'll be done for, I don't know. <laughs> We've been asked, if we would kind of review the last couple of years, what the story was and um, why we left and how come we're back. So, um, two years ago, we had some things happen to us both. And it's when you... Health, um, health things. When, um, I believe it was Jess from Roots and Refuge who said that when you have a YouTube channel, you live in a glass house. And it is true. Um, we had people who hated us and we had people who loved us and prayed for us. And- You think people hated us? They just- were, They were pretty vicious. Just, they us. were vicious, yeah. <laughs> I think for them, it was, they were just being honest. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we, um, we actually don't talk about two years ago very much because it was such a hard time for us. We left, it was a scary time. It was a hard, scary time. Um, we had things that went on for several months, and um, we appreciate everybody's prayers. We give a lot, we give all of our health recoveries to those prayers. And, you know, as it started, it was, it was a pretty disturbing time. So, some of the predictions, the medical predictions, were pretty dire. And so it, was, it made it really scary. And um, it caused us to totally rethink what we were doing. Um, it, it was that extreme. And after several months, it wasn't. Uh, everything was cleared up, everything was fine. The predictions proved to be, uh, if, if they were true when they were made, there were some miraculous changes that happened health-wise. Um, if they were never true, then we were pretty misled by medical people. E either way, for us, it was very real and very scary, and it caused us to make some dramatic changes in our life uh, so that we could 
properly take care of ourselves. And so we decided to go and be closer to family. In a monk's there, somebody broke her hand and spent months, months recovering with three different surgeries. Um, we uh, would like to give a tribute to people that helped us get through the last two years. Besides all of the people that are mentioned um, later in this film on helping us with our home before we left, um, we'd love to give, um, first and foremost, I think, uh, a thank you to Austin and Sierra, who were living in this home for the last two years, whose story we'll tell in a minute. Yeah, we, we, we're kind of getting ahead. We ought to tell that story first, give everybody some context. Okay. So, as we were preparing to leave, we put our property up for sale, and... Um, Austin had been helping us all along and a great deal of help as we were getting ready, getting the house ready so that we could sell it. And we began to talk and they, their lease was up where they were living and they had wanted to purchase this home and weren't ready when we purchased it. And so we worked out a deal with them. It was a lease purchase arrangement because they still weren't quite ready to buy, but they would be, and they, they had to rent somewhere, and this was similar cost to what they were paying, but they were getting a lot better situation for the lifestyle they wanted to have. So we had an 18-month 18, 18 agreement with them, and about 12 months into that agreement is when COVID came to be a real issue. And one of the fallouts from that was that Austin was laid off from his job and found himself uh, unemployed and only able to pick up work here and there. So it was a little bit spotty for them. So prior to that, we were trying to figure out what we were going to do because we couldn't buy any place until this place sold. And so we started looking all over again. Because by that time, <laughs> Our situation has changed and, and we were living in an RV, living in an RV in Nevada, uh, helping our daughter, but which is kind of, I, I, now I should step back and do that. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we, um, after all my hand surgeries and everything, we, uh, decided to go over to live with our daughter in their backyard with our RV. They had a big, they have an acre there. So. And so, um, she was going to have twins after waiting to have children or not being able to have children for 11 years. And so it was an opportunity for this grandma to be there with my daughter, our daughter, that we had not gotten to be near since she was married. And so it was this exquisitely wonderful uh, time to be there. We we're really hot. <laughs> Is this closed? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, it it's closed, possible please. we might just move right here on the stairs. Now it's closed. Now it's closed? That might cool. Okay. I don't think it's going to cool down. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so I want to take this moment to thank our daughter and her blessed son, husband, our son-in-law. <laughs> For putting up with us. Putting up with us. And um, it, it's tough, even though you love each other, it's tough to have someone there that can walk in your house anytime. And then for part of the time, at nine months of the time, we moved over to one of our followers who lived there, and Connie and Tim, and lived in their um, farm. And they had a large farm. And so our gratitude for those people who took us in during that time is something that we can never physically repay. No, it's... Um, it was just an amazing time to be able to thank them. Uh, besides thanking our sons in Denver when we were going through all my hand surgery and everything like that. And, and my sister. And your sister and for putting... Nephew. We lived on his sister's farm in an RV. <laughs> because of 
because we need of, to be close to the right. doctor there. Yeah. So we just have to thank those people. Now we can go back and say, dur before that time that COVID hit and before Austin was laid off, we were looking for it was a place. Time. Uh, we needed we we knew we couldn't wait to the last minute, so we started scoping things out a bit, deciding where and what we were faced with. And we really thought it would be Oregon, but it wasn't because of the cost of living still. And we realized that the place that we want to be more than anything is Missouri. Yeah. And so we found two pieces of property, one above us and one below us here in Missouri. And that, then we received the call Yeah. yeah. that hey, would you like this house back? We're not going to be able to buy it. And I think we said yes. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we, we certainly did. Because it had us coming back to where we wanted to be. And we didn't have to go through the buying something and all of that. not knowing and, and figuring out how to put it together. And, you know, the devils you know are better than the devils you don't know. That's kind of how we saw it, but we love this place. Don't get me wrong. It's just um, any place you buy, there's gonna be something you have to take care of. So we did not want to just displace Austin and his, and family. his family. And we knew that they weren't ready to just walk away. Um, and so we allowed them to stay here for another year after, even after the lease was the original lease. Yeah so that they would be a little more stable and be able to do things on their own time frame. It allowed us too to be there with our babies um, until they were 19 months old. And spend a, another winter in our RV. <laughs> Which was really tough. But anyway, so that is the storyline of why. We've had people that say, this is the same farm. I'm like, well, they haven't been watching. <laughs> um, but that's okay, we don't have time to watch. To oh, trust me. <laughs> um, what, what's YouTube? <laughs> so that is our story. And now we're going to show you part of our farm and a little bit of a tour of everything. As part of our tour, we want to show you some of the changes that have happened inside the house. Since we were gone. Since we were gone. And those that need to be done. There's still some to be done. Oh. Always some to be done, right? <laughs> This door was um, a little tiny door, front door, and they put in a bigger door. We still have to repair the bricks here and put on some siding. Windows? Yes, the windows are new. New, bigger windows. Coming to our home. So, when we lived here, let me turn some lights on. When we lived here, there was dark paneling. And they took that out and they put in drywall. It's partway mudded, so we need to finish mudding and painting. And I'm gonna show them here. This was, is where the electric panel is in the living room. It wasn't the kitchen and they had someone come and flip it to here. We're going to have it completely reinstalled so that it's new. And then if it has to stay here, we have this really cute cupboard that Jim is going to be cabinet that he's going to be putting over it after it has metal on it and it's done appropriately. And this, what is this called? Beam. This beam <laughs> is the beam that uh, Maya from Roots and Refuge and Dan. Dan from, I don't know what his channel is. I forget. Forget his channel name. And yeah. he's, he, he came up with, uh, from Arkansas, and the Holler family, and 180 Ethan. degrees from average, um, Ethan came, and Gil was here, and the Grateful Baker's, Sunites. That was from Great Baker's Acres. That was from Baker's Acres, and they were all here to help, and we took out this wall, and this beam was put in. So now this is all one room. Well, there was still, an ugly attic up here. And I'm going to hold it and let Jim explain. 
You know in your garage where you have the, the pull down stairs to go up above your garage area? That's how we got into the rooms upstairs or attic stuff upstairs. And we wanted to do stairway and Austin had a great idea. He want, really wanted to do it because it's something he's dreamt of doing. He wanted to learn how to do it. And so when we had to leave and they took over the house, he built the stairs. Engineered the stairs is probably the so, way to describe it. They are really quite a masterpiece. So when you walk in the door, you see them like that. Now, let me point out a couple of things. This room is not real wide, so that's a bit of a problem, but it's not real, real long. There used to be stairs that went up here, and they were really steep, like they always used to make them. Not real safe. They were not here in our lifetime. No, they were not here in our lifetime, but we could tell from the construction that they had been like right here, but extremely steep. And so come on with me and we'll show you what we have upstairs. See the stairs curve around, this saves some space. You also see this wall right here. So if we'd had stairs coming up this way, we'd hit the wall, which maybe we could have worked that out. But the other problem is when you get up to the top, then you'd be bumping into this with your head, which wouldn't work. So I'm gonna show them the beautiful stairs. And of course, we're gonna finish them. Um, he wanted us to be able to finish them the way we wanted to. This is my office. Uh, I have wood. I'm building a desk, a real desk that I can use, but it's not done yet. But I still have stuff to do. So this is where I do all my work, including video editing. And school. And school right now. And this is my office. And where I've got my desk, which is a makeshift for right now, where I can do all of my homework and vlogging and different things. We're going to build bookcases and right where Jim is standing, so let's switch places. There's going to be a day bed right here so I can take a nap when I need to or um, we can have a guest that can come up and be in this room if we're needing a guest. Needing a guest. If they need to stay here. Be our guest. Be our guest. Okay, that part's done. Done, done. So, so you might go, oh my word, there are tearing their kitchen apart already. And kind of, yeah. But <laughs> just making a couple of changes that we need to logistically and changing a couple of cabinets around. There's several things that didn't work while we were gone. So we're starting to fix and we're just doing a little bit each day. While we were taking down the cupboards, there was a knock at the door. And there stood the propane guy who said he wouldn't be here for several weeks. So we're so excited because now look, I have a gas range and we took the tiny little cupboard that was in here and we put the big one in and you're like, Wait a minute, that cupboard does not fit there because there's a hole here. So we, unlike Joanna and Chip, we are putting a wall up instead of taking one down. Or Aaron and Ben. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't take oh, one? Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Anyway, we're going to extend, close this doorway up just this much so that it makes for a more complete kitchen. electric. <laughs> this is our little sweet table that we've made for ourselves until he gets the farm table made. And we're having breakfast in our own kitchen, cooked in our own kitchen by my own hands, not eating out. It's so wonderful. We're having a spinach, chili, um, egg, and cheese and sausage bur burrito. We're growing, hopefully growing grass, and we're also growing animals. Pasture. Pa we, yeah, we got the pasture, but we don't have it paddocked off yet, and that's it's a project. Um, but they still need to eat, especially Missy, who is with calf. You hear her in the background, she's hungry. So we're getting some hay 
for them. We do them twice a day. Uh, they were getting once a day, and our our opinion, we don't know. Our opinion is that if they space it out, they they actually get more benefit from it instead of having it all at once and eating it all and then maybe not. I don't know. It just it seems like they can digest it better. So we're doing them twice a day. Half and half. Half and half. So he takes it and spreads it in, and this is our future food forest and area. So we're not worried about them eating the grass down more than they should. And he is going to spread it throughout the <laughs> pasture. You're going to get the gate there? Uh, yeah. She's just going to start eating right now, huh? Honey? I, I know. <laughs> you gonna get that Tillamonk, huh? We are newbies at this. Those of you who have raised animals, especially cows, you're probably looking at what we're doing and shaking your heads, and we get it. So we're not claiming to be authorities. For us, this is more of our video journal. And if we're wrong, we're wrong. So those of you who know better, let us know. Uh, we're learning in the process. After we've been doing this for a few years, then we can authoritatively say this works, that doesn't work. Right now, all we're saying is this is what we're doing. Where they were being fed before in their corral area, the hay was being put pretty much in the same places. And so there was leftover for various reasons and it was getting more and more. So a lot of hay wasn't being used. As I've spread it out here to where it's in little piles, what I'm seeing is what's left over when they're done eating, very little. So they're getting a lot more of the hay that they're eating. That's what it looks like to me. So, you know, I'm sure that this is a, an age-old known fact among those who feed their cows out in the field. Uh, but it definitely works. It's definitely the right idea. The intent, though, is to move Missy. These other two are going to leave At the soon. end of April. End of April. And uh, we'll be moving Missy differently. Now the pasture they came from may be ready by then. It will have had enough time to recharge with them being gone. And it's actually closer to the barn, which is where we would prefer to have her as she has the baby. So hopefully the corral area dries out enough that it's not just a mud pit. Uh, but either way, at some point she's going to move down to the lower pasture, the bigger one, and we're going to be paddocking that off so that we can graze it in a way that we encourage additional growth and recharging between the times that she's on the various paddocks. You know, we have had some surprises happen to us lately as we've been out around Bolivar. <laughs> Two different times we've had wonderful subscribers come up to us and say, hi, I know you. <laughs> well, we were in the county building today and talking to the, the person at the, the desk there. And from one of the desks behind her, one of her workmates said, what did she say exactly? Well, she says, did you just move to Missouri? And we're like, yeah, I, um, yeah. And she goes, yes, they did. <laughs> it was so wonderful. <laughs> and then we were at the DMV and a gentleman walked out just before us and said, I didn't want to embarrass you in there, but I know you. <laughs> oh my goodness, Kitty, what are you doing? <laughs> Wanting some attention. <laughs> and, <laughs> Anyway, we love our subscribers. We love our viewers. Thank you so much. And all, and we've decided that from now on, anybody who comes up, if we have a camera with us, we're going to take a selfie with you so that you could be on so our don't channel. Be, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> we would like to show you a little bit of our beautiful farm. Should we start over there? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. We uh, have been altering our plans a little bit and so some of what we've said in the past, uh, what we say now may be a little bit changed from that, but following the permaculture principles, we've been observing what's going on. And 
So we're going to show you and tell you a little bit what's what we're changing to. I don't know if you can see it, but over there is a fence, and then coming down along here is a bit of a gully. You see it gets deeper right here on its way down to the pond, which you can't see through the trees, but it's right down there. If you zoom in, you might be able to see it. So this fence that's right here and runs up along there, we're going to move this to the other side of the gully and uh, make this part of our zone A and it's going to be a bit of food for us. We've got trees here already, lots of moisture, uh, so you know different kind of climate but a great place to do our food forest in. Then up there where the cows are and all the way over to the road back over there we're going to do some terracing and put some uh, caterpillars in and have our market garden there so i mean th this isn't next week and it's not you know maybe not even this summer <laughs> but it's the eventual in the plan so right now the cows are helping us get it fertilized ahead of time now one of the reasons that we're choosing to do it here is because we're trying to keep all of our pasture for our animals and this has never been good pasture so we're going to make it good growing ground for our food. The area where we're going to be doing our market gardening, it's pretty steep hill and if you look at it up close there's been a lot of erosion. It, a lot of the topsoil has been washed away. Uh, the, the, wa the water doesn't set there and soak in very well so not much grass has grown over in the previous years and so it's just it hasn't been really managed and it's tough to manage so it's um, doesn't really grow a lot of grass. Now, we could do a lot to it so that eventually it could grow grass, and we've thought about that, but when we compared the effort we'd have to make to get grass growing there and the amount of ground we would take up down in the lower pasture, which is great pasture pretty much all over, then it doesn't make sense to take pasture up with our uh, market garden when we could just do some terracing up on this hill and add the compost and, and, add compost and build soil. it up. This is our uh, woodshed that we built last year. It used to have a tarp here and we're going to... Three years ago. Three years ago. <laughs> and they've got some wood for us there. This is all the lath they took out of the house. Um, so, kind of walk back here. This little area here, this is fenced and it's got a fence about, how many feet would you say? 30, 40 feet down there? 50 yeah, feet? Maybe. Yeah. And so it's like a strip. So it's a really great area to put pigs in, uh, sheep in, things like that. And then you can see our beautiful, beautiful field. And let's move down there so they can see it a little bit better. I can just do it right here. So this is about eight acres. And it's lined with the trees. Of all the trees, there's a creek that runs that way. And we are going to grow pasture by paddocking it off. And it's, it's getting pretty lush right now. So we have just got to get our act together and get out there and do it right yes that's the plan <laughs> this is the back of our house and you want to tell our plan for the um well this deck obviously is pretty old needs repair but what we're looking at doing is extending it along the back side of the house uh, our, our eventual plan is the whole house is going to be ringed, except oh, the, whole, the house, whole house. The whole house is going to be ringed with a. We're going to have additional. Uh, it's going to have porch. a deck and a, a yeah. wraparound porch. Yeah, that's what we're trying to that's, say. That's the plan. That that's the long range plan for it. So uh, we're we have a lot of mold to clean off. Yeah, and we'll get to it all. We've gotten to some already. This is our tank. They, we found out today that we can paint it white, gray, 
or beige, and we think we're going to do beige. It now has propane in it. This is, I know, weird, our clothesline, but I hang my clothes all summer, and when we lived here before, that's all I had. I did not have a dryer on purpose, and I believe in hanging clothes and preserving the electric or the propane bill as long as you can. Obviously, we don't dry clothes during rainstorms, but... Uh, They've been rinsed in the rain several times. Yes, they have. This is Little Barn, chicken coop in there. We have other plants for it on the inside. In fact, let me talk about some of those plants. But first, let me talk about the corral. So what we're gonna do from, you see where the other corral is there where the line comes out and it comes like over to here as a line. We are going to put the, a corral fence here and turn this into something else. This is going to be the... Right. Go ahead. This, this area over in here is going to remain as the corral. This is going to... This back area here will be pigs and chickens. And then on this south side of Little Barn, which is in bad shape because the cows, the horses that were in this in the past really messed up the siding and tore it up and it's, it's in horrible shape. So we, it needs to be replaced. What our plans are is to turn that in to a bit of a greenhouse. Uh, coming coming out, out about 12 feet. Yeah, coming out about 12 feet so we can use it for doing starts and growing some things that need a greenhouse kind of environment. So that'll be kind of a nice addition to what's there. But we can't do that until we get the corral in place so that animals aren't coming and going right around that and tearing it up. This area right here is going to be the static area of pigs when we need a static area. When, when they're, they're really not, small. When they're not paddocking. Yeah, when they're really small and when we're not paddocking them for whatever reason. We're hoping to paddock them. I know a lot of people have had challenges with that, but many people have been very successful. And so we're going to look at what the successful folks have done and do our best to learn from them. This water trough here is pretty interesting. It's got water here and water there and it's time to clean it out. But it's concrete set down in the ground. It has a line coming from the well over to it and it has a valve on it that is temperature sensitive. When the temperature drops down freezing, I guess. I don't know exactly what it's uh, set for, but when it does that, it actually opens and starts running water. And then there is a pipe in there that when it fills up full enough, the water goes into the pipe and runs out and come down here. I'll show you what it does. And this needs repaired. It looks like the cows broke it up. But this pipe right here, as you can see the broken end, actually is supposed to run out there. And when that overflows, the water runs out there. So there's a constant flow of water and what's in there doesn't freeze. And in fact, during that really deep freeze that happened here, what, last month, mm -hmm. it did not freeze. And so the cows, animals have water all the time. Yeah, it's always available. So it's kind of a nice feature. So this is our chicken yard. This is our original chicken yard. Um, Right here. We built this and it goes this far. You want to step in here for a moment and show them this? Yeah. We're going to put a video card up here. You'll see a video where we put build a fence without digging and that's what we did on this. This nothing is dug. This has lasted three years. It was made amazingly. And what we're going to be doing right now is putting metal roofing right along here to keep the rain off of them. This area that's all out here is what um, Austin put up to increase his area. We're taking it down. Um, we've got their chickens for right now and we our flock isn't going to be as big right now, but um, we're going to free range more than that. And um, 
So we're going to dump a bunch of wood chips right here and start doing deep bedding. That's what we're going to do for anybody that's static. We're not going to take you into the big barn right now. It's got so much stuff that needs to be cleaned up and we actually have our truck in there right now because it needs a new radiator. So he's got to take the radiator out. Um, so we'll show that a little bit later. Over here is was the loafing shed and where the gray is, you used to be able to drive through there and park. Uh, it's where we've been storing our stuff since October. And it's really nice now because our storage unit is right there. We didn't have a U-Haul truck come and dump everything in our house. We're bringing stuff in as we empty it into a place or get a place to do it. So it's really nice to be able to do that and just have it be right there. We have ordered some um, grow boxes. We, we had priced what it would cost us to make them and we actually found somebody who I think they're milling their own lumber and they're making the, the grow boxes. So it's less expensive for us to buy the grow boxes from them already put together than for us to make them ourselves. So And they're cedar. Yeah, they're made out of cedar, so they're going to do some, they're going to last a bit. So we're getting eight of them. Yep. So we're, the 50 foot garden that's right here is going to turn into a 40 foot garden, but it's going to have spaces between the grow boxes. So it's still going to be 50 foot long. And then we're going to have four more, three here and then one on the other side of the well house. There's already a bed there, but it's only four by eight. This is going to be four by 10. These are all 10 foot long that we're getting. So uh, we're, we're anxious to do that. But what we're going to do prior to bringing them in is we're going to uh, mow this low, all the grass really low, and then we're going to cover it with the sheets of ground cover, the, the strips of it, because this is going to be the kitchen garden where Rinda can come out in her slippers <laughs> and go and pick the greens or whatever she may need for the meal that day, and it's going to be available right here growing close to the house, very gettable, but she's not going to have to walk through grass or anywhere that w there may be ticks or chiggers that are going to be a problem. So we really, we don't need a lawn. Uh, there's only going to be little spaces between the grow boxes anyway, so it's going to be a great situation. This is what we're calling the barn garden. It's in between two barns and it's lush green right now and covered with clover. So we really would like to put electric fence around it, temp, you know, a temp fence, and bring the cows over here and let them chomp it down just for a few hours to be able to get the enjoyment out of it so that we don't have to waste that. This is going to be um, eight 30 inch rows, 40 feet long each with tomatoes on that side and potatoes on this side and the sprawling garden in between with all the squash, watermelon, uh, cucumbers, things like that. So one garden here, the kitchen garden, and then we've got one more place where we're doing a garden and it's just along the driveway. Let's go show. Okay. Consistent with us pushing this part of the, the yard back to, to the ravine. This area here, Austin and Sierra use this for their garden. You can show it all the way over there. It's, they were using wood chips as a means to help things out. So we're gonna take this area and also garden here. And I can't remember what we did. Three sisters. Oh, that's right, we're doing the three sisters in here. So we figure that's a great place to do it. Uh, it'll work well with the wood chips uh, because that's going to help have the nitrogen be increased, but by doing the three sisters, we're going to have nitrogen fixing going on. Explain three sisters. So three sisters, for those, a lot of people know, but it's corn. Uh, pole usually, beans. Pole beans, usually, you know, they have to be legumes like that. And then squash. Corn goes in first, gets up a little, you know, like a foot tall or so, and then the beans go in and they have, they can grow up the corn. And then... The squash goes around it. The squash that's going to be here isn't going to sprawl all over. It's going to be the ones that, you know, just like the yellow squash, 
the zucchini squash that will be around it. And what, it, what they do is they compete with bugs. So one bug gets confused by another. So that's, this is the three sisters garden. So we're going to have the three sisters, the barn garden, and the kitchen garden for now. That's what we're doing this year. Like we say, we're, we're seniors, we're growing our own food, and that's, that's why we're here, to be able to grow our own food, have it be healthy, but also to have a lifestyle that keeps us active, physically able to do things, but also eating the nutritious food that you need. It's medicine. We say grow your own supplements, and that's what the food's all about. It's a little windy today. It's gorgeous. And we just were told by our neighbors who came and brought us food that um, it's going to freeze in two days. <laughs> but that's okay, because we're here. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video this far. Uh, this, you know, we're glad to share this. And you can tell that there's a lot that we're planning to do that's going to be happening here. And as always, what we want to indicate is that we aren't putting our ourselves forward as the authorities on a lot that we're doing here. Uh, you know, we don't have decades of experience with doing things and a lot of what we're doing is the first time through. So this, as you will hear us repeat over and over, so there's never a confusion about it. This is our video journal of what we're doing. And if it succeeds, great. If you see something you like and you'd like to replicate it great if you see something we're doing really stupid and there's a better way to do it then be tell kind. us be kind <laughs> yeah, be, be kind but also tell us maybe there you know how it is sometimes you're looking at, at something that needs done and you only see one way to do it and it's the wrong way and somebody else knows better so let us know but you know that's that's where we are with this now that said we have it's interesting, both of us grew up in very different circumstances, very different situations, but both of us, for our entire childhood, lived many places. And after we were married for various reasons, some of which were choices on our part, some of which were... The Air Force. Which, <laughs> Air Force moves you around, by the way. Um, so, between the two, we have moved. moved a lot. And you guys have know, because you've been with us for four years, you know that we've moved. Yeah. A lot. So, <laughs> we have decided that we want to name our homestead. And we want it to be something that's really special to us. And we came up with a perfect name in light of what Jim just has told you. We've been down a lot of trails and some of them have gone to some great places. All of them have been good experiences. We've been able to gain and grow from all of them, but a lot of trails. So the name of our homestead, we're actually calling it a farm instead of a homestead, is Trails End Farm. And that will, we're going to have business cards made up, and that will be on all of our products that we sell, and um, any, anything that we do, we'll have a little name made for it. And we're really excited that um, this is our trail's end. And uh, we're very, very happy to be home. We um, are not stressed, except for school right now. <laughs> Um, we are, we know that there are so many projects that need to be done and I, who always stress, is just going, when they get done, when they get done. And so, if you saw the list that we were going to accomplish the first week, you would laugh. You we would, got a lot of it done though. You would roll over and laugh because we've laughed. <laughs> yeah. We did not get the table made yet. Nope. Um, and we are not making our own bed. We went and ordered one because wood is too expensive <laughs> and, and we don't have time. So we're getting smart. We're doing things right. We're taking care of ourselves. We've already started exercising again 
and we're eating in our own kitchen. Speaking of exercising again, I once we get things set up a little bit better, I want to start recording some of those sessions and posting them on Regenerate. Well, Degenerate. the only reason I would let him is because it's a pain and a half to do, but it... That's the only reason it's a pain to do? <coughs> Sorry. That's the only reason it's no. a pain to do? That seems funny. No, no, no. <laughs> it makes us exercise. Yes. Yeah. It, it us makes focus. us do it that little bit. And we definitely have the places to do it now, so we're going to do that. Yeah. So those of you who we have are an entire empty room right now. <laughs> those of you who are subscribed to Regenerate Don't Degenerate, new material going to be coming in there. New routines, more encouragement. You're going to see that. I just had somebody new sign up for it the other day. <laughs> so one thing I don't think we told you, which well, well, I know this is getting long, so we'll tell you this: is we are going to grow pasture. That's one of our main important things that we're going to be doing. And our goal is to do our cow and her baby, followed by some, we don't know how many, doper sheep, followed by three American guinea hogs, followed by some chickens. One day in each paddock. And um, that's what our goal is to be able to do. So we have, have a lot to learn about that and how that's going to work here. And, you know, in general, how do we do it? But for our particular pastures that we have, how does it work there? What, what, because they're all, they're different as you go across. So. You will still see um, projects at home. And I'm going to have Jim bring this into the kitchen right now because we haven't showed you the kitchen. It's got boxes there, and I'm just gonna show it. Right now, we took the um, the table that Ben Ben Holler made us two tables, one for the laundry room and one for my island. And my island is still stuck in the back of the storage room. I cannot get it out. So we took the one from the the laundry room, which is smaller than my island, and put it in the kitchen right now. So come on now. I'll give him a quick tour of that. We sanded all of the counters down completely and we're going to be staining them and putting a polyurethane on them because the oil just doesn't do it. Um, the polyurethane, we've done some research and it is food safe as long as you don't cut on the surface. So all the cutting will be done on my island and on breadboards and we just won't ever do that. And that way my cupboards can be fine. So we have um, this, the sinks made it, everything made it. These are coming down and we've got other things that are going up here. Um, electric still being redone. <laughs> and um, this, we're getting a duplicate of this one that will go right here. And this will become a different refrigerator when we can afford to get one. So, um, Anyway, lots of projects. You will be able to come along with us, but we're pacing ourselves because you all tell us to do that. Pacing our pocketbook, um, we're pacing everything. Once again, thanks for coming along in this journey with us and watching this. Uh, we appreciate that. This is the time to like and subscribe. And you guys, thank you so much for being part of this, especially our live audience that is watching the premiere with us. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.